So I went into live action Avatar giving it the benefit of the doubt and I wanted to give it a fair shot, right? I did it with One Piece, made a video about it. If you want to check it out, do so in your own time. But I wanted to give it a benefit of the doubt. I wanted to see if it was something worth watching because I had watched the original series a few years ago back when it first got onto Netflix, recently rewatched it for the first time after that point and I ended up really enjoying it all over again just like I did the first time around was ready for the live action series to see what they changed about it and I was not enjoying it after the first episode I found a lot of problems with it that I simply just couldn't ignore for a long time and then as like I continued to keep watching episode after episode I found more and more problems and more stuff that just bothered me and I couldn't let go so after I think episode five I didn't even start episode six I just I stopped, right? I was tempted to stop, stop after episode four, right? After episode four, I was done. But I, I watched one more episode, see if somehow it would turn around, give it, give it one last shot, and it just was not good. So the first episode, one of the big things that really bothered me, just like off the start, was just like the waste of time that the episode has by starting off with the beginning of Sozin starting his plan of the invasion of the other nations. So obviously Sozin's Comet shows up before he was called Sozin's Comet, of course, and he uses the power up that he gets from Sozin's Comet to go and invade other nations. One of the big places is the Southern Air Temple. And the thing that I found really stupid was the fact that a whole bunch of airbenders, like all of them, like Monk Yagzo says himself that all of them showed up to celebrate the festival for the comet that was showing up that day after a hundred years of it not showing up. So Monk Yagzo states himself that all of the airbenders from all the other air temples are showing up to the Southern Air Temple. Later on, we see a scene of a bunch of monks that are presumably the monks of the Southern Air Temple meeting up together and talking about how they know that the Fire Nation is conjuring up a plan to go and attack their Earth Kingdom, specifically Ba Sing Se, because that's like the biggest Earth Kingdom in the entire Earth Kingdom nation, and that the Water Tribes and the Water Nation was going to be sending soldiers to go out and help with the war against the Fire Nation, and how the monks were talking about how they wanted to send their own like tribe members, their own members, their own monks, and their own air nomads to go and help out with the war effort, which doesn't make much sense considering the fact that the air nomads and monks were pacifists. They didn't like violence, and anytime they you actually see them fighting, it's for self-defense, and they never actually ever actively try to hurt anybody. Meanwhile, the monks are talking about how they want to send soldiers to go and help out with the war effort against the Fire Nation, completely against their character. But whatever, I guess we'll just ignore that for the time being. The whole thing happens, as you know. Aang realizes or finds out and is told that he's the Avatar. Doesn't like how his life is changing because everything just shifts to him being given this responsibility that he wasn't prepared for. And his life changes from being a regular normal kid because he's only 12 years old. To now having to prepare to becoming the most powerful being in all of the world. And it's just a sudden shift, he doesn't like it, even though the reason why he leaves is actually kind of different from the original series. I'm still going to describe it like that regardless because it's just simpler that way. So he leaves the Air Temple, gets frozen in ice for 100 years. We actually see the, the entire Air Temple get completely demolished by the Fire Nation, which I thought wasn't really necessary. It was interesting to watch, but definitely not needed. Aang, frozen 100 years, gets brought back. One of the first people that he meets is... Katara and Asaka, and then this whole thing happens where he is then being told information about the war going on. Something that I really didn't like was that he was told about what happened to the airbenders over at the Air Temple and how they had basically gotten killed off because you no, know, they were looking for the Avatar. The, the the Fire Nation back then was looking for the Avatar. They knew that the Avatar was going to be an airbender after Avatar Roku because they know how the cycle works. And yeah, I don't like how they actually tell him that all the airbenders actually got killed because I think it ruins the buildup of the mystery for Aang, right? It's a we like we can tell what's going on. We can tell as an audience from the original series like what happened that airbenders that had once existed before just aren't there anymore. They're like none of them exist anymore. Aang is the last airbender. Yeah, but it's a slow buildup and mystery for Aang up until he finds Monkey Yatsu's body and then he has the reaction that he does where he goes into the Avatar state for the very first time. I think it ruins the buildup, it ruins the reaction that he has. I didn't like it whatsoever. We continue on to episode two and things get even more weirder because off the start, like we have Sokka in the previous episode siding with Katara and, and saying that they need to go and save him from Zuko, who's 
been looking for the Avatar for like two to three years. And at the beginning of the episode, he's like, no, nah, we're going to go back home. Like, fuck Aang. You know, we're not going to help him anymore. We already did our most, the most that we did. We already did our part. We don't need to help him anymore. We're just going to go back home and pretend like nothing, none of this ever happened. And I didn't like that because it, that just didn't really seem like it's Sokka's character to do. You know, I feel like now he has this responsibility. He realizes that th there's only one thing that needs to happen and it's to help Aang become the avatar that he needs to become. And by mastering all the elements, he's going to end up eventually needing that to fight the Fire Lord. And that just totally fits within Aang's character. But for some reason, Sokka just decides that he doesn't want to do that. I, I thought that was a very weird moment for his character in a live-action series. We continue on to Kiyoshi Island, and obviously we meet the Kiyoshi Warriors and the people of the village. I found it very strange that, like, the head of the village was very, like, what's the word I'm looking for? suspicious of Aang like she didn't believe him that he was actually the Avatar and even when the Kyoshi Warriors see Aang for the first time even after he does airbending Suki still doesn't believe he's the Avatar until the statue of Kyoshi and her eyes light up that's like that's the indication the sign for her and the other Kyoshi Warriors that Aang is indeed the Avatar which doesn't make sense to me but whatever like I guess give them the benefit of the doubt, you know, like maybe they just assumed maybe like there was just wasn't no way, but he's the only airbender in existence now and no other avatar had been reborn like like during the 100 year time period. We knew that the avatar was still alive. It's just that no one knew where he was and it's because he was frozen for 100 years and no one could find him because he was frozen underneath the water. It made sense, but now it's just they, they just were like don't they don't know whether to trust him which i thought was very weird another thing i found very weird about the episode was suki herself and the fact that she's kind of obsessive over Sokka for some reason even though that's not how it was in the original series because as i already mentioned in my previous video they decided to go ahead and completely scrap this whole thing where Sokka was pretty sexist towards women right immediately he didn't think women could be warriors he thought that you know the whole mentality of oh women deserve to be in the kitchen they're only good for like sewing and cooking and taking care of the house and all that stuff we right? very sexist attitudes and mindset and behavior but the thing that happened in the original series was even after he had this mindset and after he got humbled by suki by basically beating his ass right and showing that he's not hot shit he's not the, the strong capable warrior that he thought that he was he accepts that he made a mistake he accepts that he was being an asshole towards suki and the other kiyoshi warriors apologizes towards them and asks for help and training and to becoming a stronger warrior that and that would eventually lead towards his journey to eventually becoming the leader that he was always destined to become and they just replaced that by having suki be the one that's obsessed about Sokka like there's this scene where Sokka is like washing his face with cold water he doesn't have a shirt on Suki just shows up out of nowhere in the background tells him that there's food in the in like the village hall stands there for a few seconds and watches him Sokka is clearly uncomfortable like like being watched by Suki like this he's like actively trying to cover himself because he's uncomfortable and embarrassed being seen like this and then she just walks away afterwards Good evening. It was so weird, and I guess that is because of the fact that they make it very apparent that Kiyoshi Island is like self isolated and they don't interact with the outside world very much. Which I don't remember if that was the case in the original series. It that doesn't really make much sense, and that doesn't sound right. Like, I don't think that's how it was in the original series, but. I guess that's what they wanted to do with the live action. It doesn't make sense, but whatever. Episodes 3 and 4 are the ones that I felt were, like, the most egregious. Because in the first two episodes, they had already, like, shown a lot of issues with the writing and the, the pacing of the episodes. They go through a lot of plot points very quickly in just the first two episodes. And a lot of the dialogue doesn't really establish characters all that much. It's mostly just exposition, and that's kind of it. And I guess you can kind of give them the benefit of the doubt in the first episode because we're still new to the world and Aang sort of is new to the world as well because he was frozen for 100 years and doesn't really know what's going on. But after that point, you really need to focus on expanding character, expanding character growth and explaining how this character feels in this moment during this time and how this person feels about this character. 
and that doesn't really happen for a majority of the runtime, at least in the like five or so episodes that I've seen. A lot of the characters' dialogue doesn't really talk about how this person feels about this thing. It's mostly just exposition dialogue. Not to say that they are only focusing solely on exposition and that characters don't talk about how they feel at a particular time. Most of the time, it's just expositionary dialogue that is just extremely boring to listen to and it's not exciting. It's just... It's so grating and you don't you don't care because a lot of it could just be explained with visuals like just like it, it's like a, it's show don't tell right you, you, you need to show us what's going on and then tell us how the characters feel about what just happened instead they just do the exact opposite and it just doesn't work but like I said episodes three and four were I where I thought they're most egregious because that's when they start blending a lot of plot points that happened in episodes from the original series, just all on Omashu. Team Avatar gets to Omashu, and the first thing that Aang sees is what he thinks is to be an airbender. Turns out, it's actually Teo, who, if you don't know or don't remember these characters, Teo and his dad were the people who were taking care of and looking after the Northern Air Temple back in the original series. He's the kid who uh, is in a wheelchair and he uses a glider to you know obviously glide around through the air and for some reason he's just on in omashu and i don't really know why this was a decision they wanted to make other than just to like cut down the time of meeting him for the first time in a completely different place when it was just simpler to like introduce him in, in omashu i don't like that because it's a plot point that didn't need to be introduced here Right, because the main thing that happens in Omashu is they're looking to rest, they're looking to resupply for, you know, whenever they need to go camping somewhere and like out in the wilderness to rest. And the main big important thing that happens in Omashu is that Aang meets Bumi for the first time uh, in Omashu and realizes that he's the king, he's like this weird creepy old guy. But that doesn't happen until the next episode, in episode 4, and it, Aang recognizes him immediately, which I don't really understand why they did that as well, because it was it was kind of funnier just to see Bumi as like this weird like old guy who's trying to like test Aang for some reason. But you don't really know why he's testing him. And in the original series, he's testing him to see if he's ready for the responsibilities of that of the Avatar. Which definitely makes sense because Bumi knew him back over a hundred years ago. He's wondering if he's fully prepared for what's to come next in his journey, right? It's a it's a test for how he's going to pre proceed in the future, in the next coming events that are going to happen after in, in Omashu. In the live action, it really feels like that he's doing this out of like very petty reasons, like he's angry at Aang. And, and the thing that I noticed and realized like after like thinking about it for a little while, the show really likes to emphasize like the fact that Aang was frozen for a hundred years and that he's a terrible person for that and that he did something like awful and truly terrible and like him getting frozen for a hundred years and running away like a coward caused like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to get killed and it's really emphasizing something that didn't really need to be emphasized because Aang is already fully aware that he messed up and he fucked up in a lot of ways and he carries that guilt with him all the time in every episode pretty much he just doesn't ever explain it because he tries not to think about it he tries not to think about how he messed up he tries to move on forward and try to do better right try to be the avatar that he's supposed to become and try to be the better person in the future make up for the for the mistakes that he has created that he has made that's like that was the whole point of why he talked to boomy why he was interacting with boomy but boomy just for some reason is just this old spiteful asshole and like he's trying to like get ang to do something that he's not supposed to and this and that it was just very weird it was a it was a change to king boomy's character that i didn't like so not only do we have boomy but then we have Teo and his dad so that's two entirely different plot points like melded, melded together in omashu and then they also decide to throw in jet into freedom fighters so that entire plot line of him trying to go after like Earth Kingdom villages and like 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 innocent civilians for no reason other than the fact that they might have something to do with the Fire Nation or just like to go after the Fire Nation specifically. They throw that in there for Omashu for some reason. So three entirely different plot points are pretty much happening all at once at completely different times. And then we throw in the uh, the episode where 
Iroh gets captured by uh, the Earth Nation soldiers and is then being sent over to what I'm assuming is actually supposed to be Bossing Say. I think I remember in the original it was supposed to be Bossing Say for the crimes that he committed over there. And that just wastes time as well. And it's another plot point that is happening at an entirely different time that didn't need to happen. And then after the end of the, the, the plot storyline with Jet and the Freedom Fighters, he just randomly disappears for the rest of the episode in episode four. They then start the plot line where like they have to go underground in the tunnels, like with the story of the two lovers and how they create the tunnels to continue their secret love from their different villages and then like w like one of them died like oma and shu that whole thing with like the badger moles underground and how they were the original earthbenders of the world yeah they throw in that plot point into like this whole thing with omashu that's how actually how they are able to get into the king the kingdom of omashu inside of the castle to go help ang defeat boomy and it's just like like four or five entirely different plot points that happen at entirely different times some of them end some of them don't some of them happen all at one time all at once at different moments of time and we constantly go back and forth and back and forth from different moments of time with different characters and then you throw in moments like Iroh and the funeral that he had for his son we actually see that and then randomly like Azula and her friends will fucking show up and like they're doing stuff and it's just it's just wasting time. It's putting focus on stuff that doesn't need to be focused on yet. We don't we didn't need to be introduced to Azula yet. We didn't really need to learn these moments and like this these aspects of Iroh's character yet. That could have been saved for a later episode, but instead they just like throw this all out at once and I don't know what the problem is. Maybe it's just because of like the episode limit. There was only eight, eight episodes and they were like all upwards to like 45 to like an hour long. 45 minutes to an hour long. It was just, it was very weird. It, it felt like they were trying to condense a lot of plot points in a short amount of time. And that leads to terrible writing and terrible pacing. And those are the things that I find are the most egregious about the show and that I felt extremely, extremely distracting. Because otherwise, I don't really have much else to say about this show because it's honestly pretty decent. The casting isn't bad, the acting isn't bad. Sometimes the effects can be a little bit hit and miss, but most, uh, most of the time they're actually pretty decent as well. The show overall just needed a little bit more time in the oven to be able to expand more plot points to happen like less frequently and not as conjoined up as they ended up being and spend more time introducing character growth and character development because it really felt like that that's something that they were missing most of the time and then of course it's missing the whole like charm of the original series where it knew when to be silly and fun and this series just misses that it's just it misses the charm that the original series had when characters are making a joke like Sokka it just doesn't land it's not funny they do the whole like running gag from the original series with the guy and the cabbages and his cart and stuff and they build up this whole joke if oh is he gonna say my cabbages is he gonna say it is he gonna say it here no he didn't say it here maybe he'll say it next time you see him and then when he finally says it they make it this big spectacle thing and it's just like that's not funny it's like you're either gonna say it or you're not it's like they missed the entire point of why that running gag from the original series was funny in the first place which is ironic enough because like after they beat boomy and like he comes to his senses they actually do the my cabbages joke again and they actually used it properly and it's like they know how to use it properly but the first time they, they use the joke they fucked it up and they just like they completely missed the entire point of why the joke was funny in the first place so i don't know it seems like there were there was a lot of changes that didn't they need they needed to make to fit in the time limit that they were given and it just didn't work you know it just didn't work a lot of the stuff that we actually have seen from like on like on an episode by episode basis like that one episode where they go to the great divide in the earth kingdom remember that episode i think it was actually in the first book i'm not entirely sure that might have been the second book i'm just not remembering it properly instead of actually seeing the great divide being done in the live action series we hear someone else talk about that in the background when Zuko's trying to find information on 
where Aang is, where Team Avatar is. And then he meets June, and then we see June for the first time, and she's looking for Aang now. And I would talk about Episode 5, but honestly, I just... I don't really have much else to say about the show. I think I've honestly said enough. I've gotten my point across. The show needed a little bit more time in the oven. It could have been great. It's just there are issues that the show makes very, very apparent that... I simply just cannot ignore and there are some stuff that I again I would mention that happened in episode 5 like Katar and Sokka being taken taken into the spirit world when there's no reason for them to be taken into the spirit world and it ruins like a whole bunch of other plot points that happen afterwards it's just really bad I just I wasn't enjoying it I wasn't having fun I don't think this live action series is very good I think they have made a lot of changes that just don't work for me and I think for a lot of people it's not going to work as well I think so far, a lot of the critical reviews aren't doing very well. Audiences, uh, are, I think, are pretty mixed about this. I've seen a lot of people say good things about it and bad things about it, but that tends to happen all the time. Yeah, that's honestly all I have to say about Avatar, The Last Airbender, the live-action series. And yeah, I'm a little disappointed because after rewatching the animated series, the original series back from 2005, I... I, I really enjoyed rewatching it because it had been like three or four years since I'd seen it and I really enjoyed it. I ended up really, really enjoying it more than I did the first time around and to see the live action series just drop the ball as hard as it did, it was a massive disappointment. So yeah, honestly, that's kind of all I have to say. So let me know what your thoughts are about this series down below. I'm very interested to see what people have to say about it uh, in this video. I'd be, I'm actually super, super curious as to what some people have to say, so please comment if you do have the time. Otherwise, if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like, and if you want to see more, please be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.